Greetings friends, once more I want to welcome you and for stopping by. Thank you so much. This is one word, Advent Ministry. A word today is Shepherd's Rod. Shepherd's Rod. Uh, this name, of course, uh, it may ring a bell to you. To most people, it doesn't mean anything. Of well, everybody should be familiar with the Shepherd's Rod. Uh, we will be looking at this word, this name, through the eyes of Seventh-day Adventist. Yes, Seventh-day Adventist. Uh, this word means a lot. Uh, this name means a lot to Seventh-day Adventist members, leaders, conference, everyone. Uh, many may not have heard it, but soon they will hear the name Shepherd's Rock. And of such, we will talk a little about it at this time. Pray with me, please, Father. We are so grateful for the privilege to come to Thee at this time. We pray that Thou will be with us all. All those who stop by, we pray for them, pray for all the families. Uh, help us as we open Your Word. Lead us, teach us what we ought to know. Give us the Spirit of Jesus, the mind of Jesus. Amen. All right, thank you so much again for stopping by. So, let's get into it. As I said, um, in the Seventh-day Adventist Church arena, the name Shepherd's Rod is to be despised. It is one name that we could say it's hated. You know, there's some hatred among the members. Uh, towards those who bear this name. Uh, the members, from the standpoint of the ministers, are the leaders. Uh, in general, are told to shun members of the shepherd's rod. Uh, Okay, it, uh, they will tell you that people who are shepherd's rod, they disrupt the church services. They'll be in the church and they will blend in and be a part there, but they will always disrupt the church services. <clears throat> And of such, they will be asked not to, uh, not to enter the church doors. Uh, th if they are there, sometimes they are told to leave. Leave the church services. <clears throat> I believe if they, uh, if they are known, even if they are not disrupting, I think uh, they are asked sometimes to leave. Uh, in some cases, leave the building, leave the property. Uh, sometimes the police uh, are called to aid in um, escorting, escorting these people from the church. Uh, it is clear that the position that generally held by the churches that those who are named Shepherd's Rod are not welcome in the Seventh-day Adventist circle. They are not welcome to fellowship with the congregation. And they are at times, some of them are disfellowshipped from because, of course, be, to be this fellowship 
means that you have been a member, have been a baptized member of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. But if you believe or if you promulgate the name or the message or the movement, the shepherd's rod, if you are part of it, some of the times they are, are, have been disfellowshipped. All right, do your research. Uh, some of the other reasons that we have discovered is that they are said to not to return tithes and offerings to the church. Uh, it is said that they promote a false doctrine. The shepherd's rod doctrine is said to be a false doctrine, and as a result, they are not welcome in the church. It is said also that they pray on, pray on the believers, especially newly baptized members of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, that the shepherd's rod would pray on them and would try to indoctrinate them and to try to take them out of the church. And of course, there are much more. You, 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 you will find information on the internet, uh, Seventh-day Adventist conference, bulletin versus shepherd's rod, all that type of information is out there. Thank God for the World Wide Web. Amen? All right. Now, from the standpoint of the rods, the shepherd's rod uh, members, uh, otherwise are called rodists, uh, you know, shepherd's rod <coughs> affiliates. Uh, some of them will, uh, of course, go to the Seventh-day Adventist Church and condemn the church or preach or shout to the church about the slaughter of Ezekiel 9. Of course, if you read Ezekiel 9, it talks about the slaughter of um, slaughtering in Jerusalem. So you go there and read that. Ezekiel 9. So the Rodis or the Shepherd's Rod members will go and they will say things. Uh, they will show your pastors are leading you to hell. Uh, and they will hand out literature to the church members. <coughs> Their time will um, attack individuals going to church, some who call themselves shepherds or would um, attack individual members uh, who are going to church uh, <clears throat> based on the way they are dressed. Okay? That they are not dressed um, modestly. They will um, address that or they will attack them on that basis. Uh, from the side of the shepherd's rod, members also, uh, they'll shout out to members on the church premises telling them that their pastors are allowing them to eat meat and things like that. Some will address the abominations done in the church, such as Christmas, that is a pagan worship. Uh, pagan celebration and Halloween, Easter, and all those things they'll address at the church uh, to the people at the Seventh day Adventist Church and say these are abominations that should not be done. They would condemn the church hospital, say they are conducting abortions, and they will go to the church premises and they'll shout that out or they will talk to members or individuals around the church compound about Adventist um, uh, members or the leadership of the Adventist hospitals committing or conducting abortions. 
and they, it's an abomination that, that they condemn. So, now that we have looked at both sides, <coughs> when we examine the behavior of both sides of the aisles, brothers and sisters, it is clear that from uh, <coughs> the Christian standpoint, uh, it is clear that most are selfish actions, selfish behaviors, totally unchristian or Christ-like. And some of these behaviors, when we examine them, should never have a place among believers. And of course, As time goes by, we hope that those in the church who, are, who, who, who will, will find out uh, be, behavior, <coughs> despicable behavior, are not welcome as church members, are welcome as, as a Christian. All right, and those members of the shepherds also should understand that despicable behavior towards individual in the church. So. As Christian in general, because of your belief or your name, it does not give you the license to behave um, badly or to be behave disrespectful um, towards each other. And of such, since this name, the shepherd's rod, uh, is a breeding ground for most or some people take it as a breeding ground for animosity, for disrespecting one another, for um, hatred, malice, and all that. We will have to address it. Amen, brothers and sisters. So, <clears throat> let's see. As we say, those behaviors have no part. No part in or among Christians. So, if you are one of those on either side that is involved in these behaviors, I hope by now you understand that you ought to be breaking up your follow ground. It's time to act like Christians. It's time to treat each other with respect and to show the world that the church is in the leadership position and not the world leading the church. Now first and foremost uh, <clears throat> we should advocate Christian principles and I think is appropriate at this point to revisit what is termed the fruit of the Spirit. In Galatians chapter 5, 19 to 20 to 23, brothers and sisters, let's go there right quick. Galatians chapter 5, we read 19. Now, the works of the flesh are manifested which are these, adultery. Uh, grab this right quick. That's one. <coughs> Sorry about that. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, immolation, wrath, Strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, envying, murders, drunkenness, drunkenness, reveling, and such like. So the list goes on and on, brothers and sisters, down the devil's highway. Of the which I tell you before, as I told, also told you in time past, 
that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Plain and simple. Verse 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. There is no law, brothers and sisters. Now let's break this down for a moment. And again, we are looking at the shepherd's rod which has become the breeding ground for animosity and hatred among believers. So follow me closely now, brothers and sisters. Uh, so let us break down the fruit of the Spirit. And I encourage you to go read again for yourself. Read and study. Galatians chapter 2, 9, um, 5, 19 to 20. Now let's look at the significance of, <clears throat> of the, uh, the fruit. For three reasons, it is significant because one, it means the result, product, outcome, or effect produced by the Spirit in the believers, brothers and sisters. So, product, outcome, or effect produced by the Spirit in the believer's life. So your life, that fruit, is going to come out. If it's the Spirit of God that puts it there, the fruit of the Spirit, then you know what type of produce, how uh, the product, how will be the outcome. Your life tells that, brothers and sisters. Your lifestyle, what you're doing now as we deal with this topic, your behavior. Unlike the gifts of the Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit, uh, we know those, are, those come in plural. Uh, some of which are given to Christian. Each believer is to have all nine virtues composing the fruit of the Spirit, which is singular. There's one fruit. I said the, all the nine virtues must be produced in an individual, unlike the gifts of the Spirit, which you may have one or two of those gifts, and not necessarily the others, but the fruit, brothers and sisters, you must have all nine virtues. We must have all nine virtues, brothers and sisters. Uh, <clears throat> so as fruit on a tree takes time, to grow and to mature. So the Spirit does not cultivate these virtues in the believers overnight. Love is willing, sacrificial giving of oneself for the benefit of others without thoughts of return. Joy is gladness of heart. Peace is tranquility of mind. Free one from worry and fear. Long-suffering is patience with others, the opposite of a short temper, a disposition, a quality-bearing injury. So brothers and sisters, the shepherd's rod, if it brings out of you <coughs> these, this disposition, uh, you're not long-suffering. Uh, if it brings out <clears throat> uh, hatred, uh, bad temper, hot temper, because of course if you relate to others because 
they bear this name or if on the other hand, and I'm talking, look on both sides, wherever, whatever side of the aisle you're on, this is in regards to your behavior. Now gentleness is kindness. <clears throat> Goodness uh, is generosity. Faith is independability. Meekness, gentleness, that is courtesy, brothers and sisters. And temperance is self-control. The question is, do we have self-control in this matter, um, dealing with shepherd's rod? <clears throat> is this too hard for us to handle in a Christ-like manner, brothers and sisters, at this late time of earth history? Ask yourself the question. <clears throat> uh, and you may say there's middle ground, but I don't think there's a middle ground, because if you're not on either side, then <clears throat> there's no middle ground. <clears throat> You're accessory to something. You must speak one way or another, brothers and sisters. You're accessory to the, to the crime <clears throat> or to these actions that are being taken <clears throat> uh, on whichever side you, the, it is, if you choose to. Um, find the middle ground. There's no neutrality for God's people at this time. Okay. So, temperance is self-control. That is the ability to harness and control one's passion, uh, brothers and sisters, and loss. Uh, uh, so the question, am I able to... Um, control my passion. <clears throat> now, at conversation, every believer crucified the flesh. Conversion, I'm sorry. Conversion, every believer crucified the flesh. Uh, that is repentance. He turned from and renounced renounced his life of sin and all the wicked passions. Okay? So, according to what we have read here, it implies that the virtues of verses 22 are uh, and 23 of Galatians chapter 5 rather than the vices so we are having virtues we 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 are um, we of ourselves are of that characteristic of virtue virtues are vices and we see that this this chapter um, deals with with both so brothers and sisters as we have been seeing up to now the um, attitude and the behavior from both sides of the aisles would be placed on the side of vices. Vices, brothers and sisters. And we are on our way to the pearly gate. Isn't that something? We ha have the characteristics of vices. And we are on our way. Our brothers and sisters behoves us this, at this point in time from this video and onward to start to cultivate the fruit of the Spirit. All nine virtues, brothers and sisters. <clears throat> because that's the only thing that should characterize those of us that are in Christ.
Now, a brother or a sister will go to church, should never be attacked. Uh, let me point this out. You don't know the individual's journey. You don't know who is who. So you don't go to church and attack an individual, shouting out words of condemnation, being critical of the dress or the way they look. Brothers and sisters, it's wrong. And we must stop doing that. It is not acceptable to publicly humiliate someone, especially when it is done by quoting Bibles. We quote Ellen White and we quote the Bibles and we said, and we think it gives us the authority to publicly humiliate individuals. And that is wrong. It is wrong, brothers and sisters, as I said, you are tampering with God's purchase. Every individual is God's purchase. And utmost respect should be um, shown to everyone. Uh, and of course, respect is earned. Respect is earned by yourself. If you are doing that, notice that you are not earning respect for yourself. And you should earn it. So go there and respect each one. On the face of that, I'll tell you that at times you definitely have to address a corrupted system, institution. It's all right to talk about the corruption that is going on, abomination in general. That's fine because. It's not your word, it's not my word, you just read it. It's verbatim. Read it from the word of God. And God will do that. But you personally have no right to be judging and to be condemning any, attacking any person. Being personal with individuals. It's wrong. And you should stop it. It's not right. All right, brothers and sisters. I would like for us to, uh, before I go to the chart, or give you, or come back to this, because I wanted to spend some time on this, because I see that this is where the downfall is. Um, I'm going to look over this chart for a moment. Uh, as you see there, because we are going to be looking briefly on the biblical account of Shepherd's Rod. So uh, that's why you see the chart in the background. So uh, let's finish with this. Uh, so let's look at gentleness. We'll just look at gentleness from, for a moment longer. Now, to illustrate gentleness, the mother told her young child to take her hand and squeeze. You know, you take, tell, tell a young child to take your hand and squeeze that your hand as hard as they can with all their might. And the child would do that. And all you would do is laugh because it doesn't hurt you. All right? Now you take that young child's hand and you just give it <coughs> a hard enough squeeze so that that child, you, you'll see this the child start cringing brother, or squirming, brothers and sisters, when you squeeze. Now, the principle here is that the one in position of power or the one that is stronger should be gentle to the weaker. That's a responsibility, especially for a Christian. That's a responsibility for those of you in the church as leaders are those in the shepherd's rod who 
are, who are armed, so to speak, with your doctrine or, your, or the truth, the present truth. You have a responsibility to be gentle to the weaker. So in this scenario, you realize that the mother, the child could not hurt the mother, but the mother could hurt the child. So if you find yourself, be it because you have your credentials, you, have, you know the prophecies, you understand the truth, you are in position of leadership, brothers and sisters, you are in a, it means that you are in the power, the position of power, you are in the position of authority, and the person that you are dealing with is weaker. Now, who has the responsibility to be gentle? If you produce the fruit of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, if the, if the Spirit produces His fruit in you, then you have the responsibility to be gentle. And that will come out in the form of, as we have said before, be courteous, be kind. All of these, you, have, you see that they are interconnected. Love, meekness. And so, brothers and sisters, if you are displaying these virtues, then even if you are in a position and you have the authority to condemn, okay, well, put it this way, put it the, the harshest I can find. If you are in the author of the authority to condemn, it means that you have a responsibility at the same time as Christ said, justice mingled with mercy and love. So you mingle all of those and your output will be right. As simple as that. <clears throat> so, brothers and sisters, we are required to take care of the weak or the weaker ones. Um, we do not talk down or condescend to anybody patronizing brothers and sisters because we should treat with kindness brothers and sisters. Treat each one with kindness. Now, now we come to the point of viewing enough enough uh, enough explanation uh, enough of my sermonette <clears throat> go back study this for yourself I'm just saying that it at this late stage if we find ourselves uh, because of the shepherd's rod one way one side or another we find ourselves behaving like the devils behaving like little devils, then, brothers and sisters, we need to check up on what we are doing. <clears throat> All right. Let us view this troublesome term from the biblical standpoint. Now, <clears throat> we have <clears throat> different accounts of the shepherd's rod. Exodus chapter 10, and Moses stretched forth his rod over the land of Egypt, and the Lord brought an east wind upon the land all that day, and all that night, and when it was morning, the east wind brought the locust. So <clears throat> Moses, brothers and sisters, <clears throat> used the rod, um, we move on. It says in Exodus 4 2, and, the, and I have it there here. Uh, if you can, let's read it together from the chart. <clears throat> read some of them here. 
I'll make it more interesting, I think. All right. All right. So <clears throat> we have this one. Okay. Exodus 4, 2 and 3. And the Lord said unto him, What is <coughs> in thine hand? <clears throat> what is in thine hand? And he said, A rod. And he said, Cast it on the ground, and it become a serpent. And you know the story that when Moses cast his rod, it became a serpent. The other uh, false prophets, they cast their rods too, to prove that Moses was just uh, not a rod. But what happened is that Moses' rod ate up all the others. Moses' is serpent, right? uh, when he picks it up in his hand, it became uh, a, a rod again. Powerful. <clears throat> um, Exodus 14. And the Lord said unto Moses, stretch, stretch out thine hand over the sea, that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horses, or their horsemen. Uh, <clears throat> of course, we have Moses was told to stretch his rod and it made a path through the sea for the Israelite. Um, and right here, he made a path out um, through the Red Sea for the Israelite here. And <coughs> after they went through, he, um, <coughs> he was told to, to stretch the rod and Pharaoh's army, of course, as you know, was drowned. Over here we have Ezekiel 37, 24. And David, my servant, shall be king over them. And they sh all shall have one shepherd. So we have the shepherd and we have, we have the shepherds and we have the rod, brothers and sisters. So, <coughs> uh, so is the rod, is the shepherd's rod something to be afraid of, something biblical? What is the shepherd's rod? Okay, let's go over here. Um, right here, we have, uh, let's read, because this will be done another time. Let's go through this. This will be done another time. So, Feed thy people, Micah 7.14. Feed thy people with thy rod, the flock of thine heritage, which dwell solitary in the wood. In the midst of Carmel, let them feed in Bashan, Gilead, as in the days of old. Therefore, therefore will I save my flock, and they shall no more be a prey, and I will judge between cattle and cattle, and I will set up one shepherd over them, and he shall feed them. So, the shepherd's rod has to do, from a biblical standpoint, with leading um, David here, uh, standing the sheep. You know the background of David. <clears throat> um, and 
we shall see more of the type of David in our time. So brothers and sisters, as you uh, familiarize yourself with these, there's Carmel, Bashan, and Gilead, three pastors that God's people <coughs> should feed, because it says, feed thy people with thy rod. So the rod here is something for God's people to feed on. And spiritually, we know we feed on the Word of God. So from a biblical standpoint, brothers and sisters, learn this. The shepherd's rod is to feed the people, meaning that it is the Word of God. All right. So we are getting somewhere. Um, Amos. Let's look down here. Amos. Amos 1, 2. And he said, The Lord will roar from Zion, utter his voice from Jerusalem, and the top of Carmel shall wither. So, <clears throat> the pastors... Brothers and sisters, the shepherds, and the rod. Uh, they are to feed God's people that dwell in different pastures. We'll go through that. Um, so for now, I want to ask you let's just back up here a little I want to ask you for now that <clears throat> whatever you need to do this name the shepherd's rod if for you it was a contentious matter. It's time to revisit it, and more so, as we said, it's time to act civilized. If you are one of those who uh, would leverage hatred and animosity towards a person that is seen to have the shepherd's rod or to be to believe that the, the, the shepherd's rod is biblical as a message then it's time to act civilized uh, if you are a Shepherd's Rod member and you are acting uncivilized towards the church member or toward the brother and sister, because in the name of religion, we have some serious crime. And that's why we have in the Middle East religious wars. Uh, there are those who are compelling others to believe or worship their gods. And they would be beheaded because of that if they don't. Convert or die is the mantra. Brothers and sisters as Christians and as Seventh-day Adventists, I want to say at this point in time, be civilized, whether you are a shepherd's rod or you are one that is in opposition, in opposition to the shepherd's rod. It's time to be civilized. It's time to revisit the fruits of this spirit and act accordingly. God bless you. Part two will continue where we will be going in to this, this part of the feeding 
on the three pastors, Kamel, Bashan, and Gilead. Feed thy people with thy rod. Micah 7 and verse 14. God bless you. Thanks for stopping by.